Hi everybody, thanks for joining our webinar. Listen, your volunteers, your donors, and your supply partners, whether it with your food or anybody who's the internal part of your organization's success is important, right? Well, the same is true for technology, infrastructure, and operations. So today's webinar is about building the essential toolkit for modern ops. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. If this is your first time, I'm going to show you how you can engage today. Um, please use the Q&A feature to type your question. I know everybody still types in the chat room. We'll grab your questions from the chat as well, but we really do prefer that you use the Q&A. The closed caption is turned on, so if you need the closed caption, just click on that CC link at the bottom of your Zoom screen. We will be emailing the recording within 48 hours, so you can watch it again and gain some more insights. So I'm gonna move out the way and introduce our speakers today. We have Daniel here from New Relic and we have Jesse here from Page of Duty and Matt from New Relic as well. Jesse, I'm gonna turn it over to you and welcome everybody. Great, thanks Aretha. Uh, thanks for the setup and introduction and, um, and getting us going with breakfast and geographic location talk. Uh, and thank you all for being here. We know that folks have busy days and a lot going on. And so we appreciate that you're taking time out of your day to, uh, to be here with us. And we'll hope that it's a valuable time spent and that there's some good and new information shared. So um, the uh, I think we'll quickly start off with some intros of the team. Um, uh, I know Rita mentioned, but um, my name is Jesse Maddox. Uh, I am uh, at PagerDuty. I lead our nonprofit and social impact customer efforts here at PagerDuty um, and have been in the nonprofit tech space for uh, 12 plus years, um, working with a wide range of uh, organization size and focus areas and geographical areas. Um, so happy to, to connect with more folks here today um, and, and continue that, um, that journey in the conversation. Um, I'll go ahead and let uh, my colleague Maggie, um, at, uh, who's also at PagerDuty, do a quick introduction, and then we'll go, go to the tech or the uh, New Relic team, and then we'll uh, we'll have Michael, you know, introduce himself, who's going to be a um, um, uh, panelist in, in sort of a Q and A session as we kick this off. But Maggie, I'll turn it over to you quickly for introduction. Perfect. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to be here today. I am a solution consultant over at PagerDuty, so I'll be going through product demonstration today. Um, I'll pass it over to Catherine, who is also at PagerDuty. Hi, um, I'm Catherine, and I'm part of the PagerDuty team, and we'll be helping to uh, facilitate uh, a couple of demos, talk a little bit about um, digital operations transformation, and we've got some polls for you, so it should be a great webinar. Great. Matt, you want to jump in on your side and have the New Relic team do Absolutely. quick intros? Thank you, Jesse. Hi, everybody. Matt Schottwaffel joining here from the newrelic.org team, part of our social impact group at New Relic. I'm joined by the amazing Daniel Kim and my colleague, Holly Gruper. Uh, Holly and I uh, work in the same uh, area of work that uh, our pager duty colleagues are with. Uh, happy to help all nonprofits in our global program. Uh, Daniel will share a little bit more when we get to him, uh, but uh, I'll pass the ball over to Holly for her intro. Hey everyone, so nice to meet you. Thank you all for making some time in your day to spend um, some quality time with us learning about how we think about um, modern ops and the kinds of problems that you might face and some like fun um, ideas we might have for how to solve those. Very excited to, to be here to be partnering with TechSoup and PagerDuty. We love you guys and looking forward to kicking it off. Thank you, Holly. Back over to you, Jesse. Great. Um, uh, so yeah, I think that the the last uh, last but certainly not least is uh, Michael Enos uh, from TechSoup, who can tell you a little bit about his role and his experience. He's got a great wealth of experience and will provide a valuable perspective, I think, and uh, around this topic and what it means in the nonprofit and social impact space. So Michael, go ahead. 
Yeah, welcome everyone. Um, so I'm uh, excited to be here and uh, I work for TechSoup. I oversee our enterprise infrastructure and um, technical operations. The I've been, um, uh, prior to working at TechSoup, I was a CIO of uh, Second Harvest Food Bank of Silicon Valley. I did that for about a dozen years or so and um, always been in the sector. Uh, doing in tech, um, which I'm passionate about, and uh, been very, very fortunate and privileged to be able to help uh, not just the organizations I work for, but also to spend time with our community and help uh, foster technical uh, digital digital transformation maturity in, in the sector um, globally. So, it's a it's a great pleasure to be here. Great, thank you, Michael. Um, so, I think uh, we. We'll have just a quick, we're gonna do a couple quick poll questions before we kick off the Q&A. Um, and I'll just do a quick overview of the agenda. Um, so obviously covered intros, like I said, a couple poll questions that we'll use in the in the Zoom just to get a sense of where people are in terms of their experience, You know, questions they might have. Um, so I think Aretha's gonna launch some of those. So while we're chatting through this in the agenda, feel free to jump in and give us a little bit of input. Um, always helpful, obviously, just to, to get a sense of some context um, and, and get some engagement going. So um, you can go ahead and you know collect, select an answer and vote, and then we'll be able to get, um, you know, collect some um, general uh, again, context of, of where folks are coming from. Um, I'm sure folks are very familiar, maybe too familiar with the chat uh, and Zoom these days. It's, we're all on it so often, but um, you know, we're, uh, we'll keep an eye on the, the chat and questions in the chat panel. So if you have any specific questions or input, feel free to, to do that along the way and we'll try and keep track as well there. And then um, we'll have a, an open Q&A towards the end of the call um, after we do the, the um, sort of live you know, um, discussion with Michael and then the New Relic team will share a little bit about New Relic and a demo and we'll do the same for PagerDuty. So that'll be sort of the flow uh, of the, the time we have together. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing folks engagement. So uh, in that first question, how mature is your technology environment? Um, got a good, a good uh, range here. Some folks uh, are very new to it and trying to maybe just get a sense of what does that actually, you know, what does that mean and what does modern ops mean? Um, some folks getting started. A decent number of folks uh, have some key tools in place, which is great to see. And a few folks that feel like they should be doing this webinar instead of us. So uh, we will, we're glad to have you here as well and uh, could likely offer some education. Um, so great, yeah, good, a good representation and a lot of folks that have a, a decent amount of experience. Um, great, we can uh, maybe jump into the next one. I think we have one or two others uh, before we kick off the conversation. And we got a good number of folks. We've got about 50 folks in the, in the conversation in the webinar now. So uh, did we have one? I think we had maybe one more or two more poll questions. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we have we'd one love more, to know. Jesse. One okay, more. right, great. Yeah. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah, uh, so yeah, it'd be great to know, you know what you're hoping to get out of this. Uh, uh, you know, based on the experience, I can take some guesses. Uh, maybe one or two folks uh, were were uh, are not here by choice, but hopefully it won't be uh, too painful of an hour. Hopefully, we can make it uh, actually in enjoyable and educational. Give another a little bit here. See what folks say. Nope, nobody says their boss made him attend. That's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, an introdu introduction to the to the topic or the the, the the companies or the tools makes sense. Uh, understand the tools to grow and scale my organization makes sense with where folks are at and enhance your knowledge about the products. Yeah, hopefully we can do all that. Obviously, uh, we want to share um, you know about each of the the, the platforms that are kind of, you know that we'll, we're representing, and also just want to really um, speak to. What is this idea of modern operations and, and digital operations in the context of the, the nonprofit space? Awesome. All right. Uh, one last one, right? That was it. That was it. Okay, was sorry. It? I'm having trouble with my counting. <laughs> um, great. Well, I think that's, again, helpful context, helpful to kind of, you know, just get a sense of where people are coming from. So, um, you know, as, as uh, you probably saw in, you know, the, on the registration page and in the communication from TechSoup about the webinar, um, you know, obviously 
the, the overall kind of topic of, of modern ops. Um, really the goal is to discuss the modern incident re response process and how to build your tech stack to minimize noise and mitigate team toil, allowing you to do more of what matters most, ultimately allowing you to focus on your mission is our goal. We realize that the, the tools we are talking about are just that. They're tools and they're really uh, intended to help you focus on the work that's most important, which is serving your constituents, your beneficiaries, your community. So that is certainly the goal. Um, so yeah, let's let's jump in. Uh, and Michael, would love to kind of have you uh, illuminate, uh, you know, what your experience has been and, and provide some additional context for where you, you know, uh, worked with these tools or other tools. And and overall, um, you mentioned you have a really wide range of experience with different size organizations. You've been doing this for a while, so I think it'd be great to kind of um, get you know get some um, a sense of, of what your experience has been and, and some of the common challenges or, or areas that you see benefits um, and and areas of emphasis in this space. So, um, with that, uh, I guess just really high level, you know, what does digital operations management for nonprofits mean to you? Um, you know, from my perspective, it really means, you know, ensuring that the people in our community have access to or that we're being the most efficient we can with uh, in, in, in serving our mission. So, you know, and that oftentimes translates to business productivity. It, it translates to the, the systems and the tools that the data that you, you use every single day as you're working with the organizations that you serve. And so for me, the digital operations aspect of this is ensuring that that stuff is all happening efficiently and that you're, you know, oftentimes, most, most often, um, you know, nonprofits are using, um, you know, funded uh, money from donors to, to, to serve their community and they have a fiduciary responsibility to be most efficient as possible with, with those resources. And so, you know, to me, it, the operations aspect of this is sort of ensuring that there's you know, that people are using those resources in the most efficient manner and also being, uh, and it, it's helping them achieve, you know, their, their goals and their strategic vision of what they want to do as an organization. So it's a support function in a way to ensuring the, the smoothness of, you know, how things are going, but also to lead and innovate in terms of, you know, how can we, because technology is always changing. So what can we do different next year to you know, take advantage of, of new technologies and new things so that we can be more productive and actually fulfill our mission even um, better. Yeah, that's great, thank you. I think it's really interesting, you know, when you've, um, you, you've certainly been in many conversations with different organizations where exactly as you said, folks feel uh, the responsibility uh, and, and a priority to really make the best use of the funds and those donated funds and be good stewards um, and that, that uh, balance of, of doing that and, and spending on programs, but also the, uh, the opportunity and, and the importance of, you know, investing in your operations. And we see it often, obviously, on commercial businesses, uh, different orientation to how we invest in the tools that help us support our operations. I think that there's um, really a great opportunity to help organizations be more efficient, you know, be able to serve their communities, but I know that that's a that's a that's a certainly a balance and some tension um, in within nonprofit organizations. So, um, what uh, kind of the, the classic? What keeps you up at night? What do you see? Um, you know, not only in your direct experience, but more broadly, what do you see are some of the common challenges experienced by nonprofit and social impact organizations when they're, you know, embarking on this journey or going through this process at whatever phase of digital transformation. Yeah, you know, sure. But the things that really sort of, um, you know, we're always trying to improve, you know, I call them the areas of opportunity is, um, you know, trying to learn how to respond better to, um, you know, things that are happening that, you know, you want to get to as soon as possible because it's affecting your your client or community's ability to, to use your service. So, you know, that, that depends on, you know, when I was, when I was running and helping run the technology at the food bank, for example, if the supply chain system, if our inventory management system wasn't working, you know, food wouldn't get to people. I mean, that's what it was like, you know, and there'd be a line of people waiting for the delivery of, of, of a very essential, you know, essential need. And so to me, you know, what keeps, what's kept me up at night is worrying that these, you know, that I'm not going to be able to respond. I mean, things happen, you know, things, 
things do break. I mean, you know, it's not a perfect world. And so, you know, your ability and your, your timeliness to respond um, is, is super critical. And especially as we, you know, with the advent of more and more increased, you know, cyber issues as it relates to incident management, I think that being able to respond quickly to a, a cyber incident is really something that, you know, and, and under having a plan for that, but also having, you know, timely response so that you can get to it very quickly and shut people off the network or do whatever you need to do to uh, ensure the safety of, of your data. And if, but it's not, you know, your data is actually your customers, your, you know, client, your donor's data. So, you know, being stewards of that data and being able to respond quickly to something is, is key. And that is, it's, it's, it's what I see is, you know, when I think about ways to improve, it, it's around like, okay, how could we be, able to be quicker and smarter and work smarter, not harder? Right, right. Yeah, I know there's some chat uh, going on. I see, um, you know, somebody talk about how, how can you even keep up with the way technology is, is, is changing and, and moving so quickly. I think another thing that's, that stands out to me is that I think sometimes, um, there's a there's maybe an assumption that nonprofits aren't as complex as your, you know, your Netflix or your whatever you know uh, commercial business. And I think that in many cases um, they're often as, if not more, complex because of some of the direct human impact, right? Like you said, getting food to people. Yeah, it's important if we uh, we get our next package, but it may be uh, you know that's that pales in comparison to making sure that somebody gets a meal. Um, and there's a lot of complexity in sort of the logistics yeah, I mean, and operations if there. If you think about it. Sometimes, you know, you know, an organization, a nonprofit organization will be working with what I believe to be some of the world's most sensitive data. And we're talking right. about the data for, for, for a vulnerable populations, um, the data of, you know, people who are philanthropic. And so you've got both ends of the coin there, right? You've got the people who's, you have, you, you're stewards of their data and they're, they just want to help, you know, they, they're, they're, they're doing some, serving some philanthropic purpose. And then on the other side, you have the people who are being served through that philanthropic effort, and and those are oftentimes most vulnerable populations. So, you know, sometimes in this, you know, at an organization, you're dealing with these two very very different types of, of problems in terms of ensuring the the efficacy of, of of that data. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this could we could go on and on here. I think um, uh, we'd love to uh, kind of. Uh, pivot a little bit to sort of a more, um, you know, spe some specific examples of, of TechSoup. I mean, I think there's, you know, there's a range, as, as you we've alluded to, of, you know, different size of organizations dealing with, you know, similar but different problems based on just context. Um, but, you know, specifically with that, within your role at TechSoup, um, do you remember the last time you were, you were called in to address a technical issue uh, or, you know, the, the uh, sort of a critical incident. I can imagine it wasn't that long ago, but can you speak to us a little bit about your experience and actually, you know, addressing um, certain, you know, technical incidents that have arisen? Yeah, you know, I'm happy to share that. The, um, you know, there's been times when, you know, we kind of have a, we kind of have a tiered system, you know, just because of the size of the organization, because we are global um, and we, we have to have somewhat of a follow the sun sort of approach. But, you know, somebody in my role, you know, is, will be, if, you know, things will get escalated to me if, you know, if there needs to be sort of a, a call to make an executive decision or in or, or communication to a, to, to a business or otherwise, you know, a customer stakeholder group. And so, you know, we've had issues where we've had, um, you know, the global team and, uh, you know, our partner services team and, you know, based out of Warsaw, um, you know, call me, you know, basically through pager duty, you know, I'll get an escalated, uh, in, you know, response up through that system. So, you know, my, my phone will go off and, and I'll look at it and I'll say, you know, gosh, I got to wake up and, and get to the computer and get it turned on and, and respond to something, you know, and uh, it, generally this already, by the time it gets to me, there's already been a couple first responders sort of a thing, you know, and so they would have they would have made that decision to kind of say this needs Michael needs to be involved with this because it's it's broader it's enterprise related so you know we, we have so we have so many platforms worldwide we have hundreds of, of platforms and so you know for if it's a you know people will figure out pretty quickly if it's an isolated incident or if it's an enterprise issue but it's an enterprise issue I'm always involved because then I'm going to have to figure out and make sure people are doing the job they're, they're you know that they understand if this is, you know, systemic, if it's a, if it's a cyber incident 
And so that'll come to me um, in short order. And we've been able to reduce that time that it actually gets to the people, the right people to make that sort of call. Um, we've been able to reduce that greatly using the tools like uh, New Relic and, and the integrations with PagerDuty and, and Slack and other types of integrated event monitoring systems. That's great, thank you. Um, I guess maybe the last kind of follow-up to that before we transition into speaking a little bit more about the actual platforms um, that will hopefully tie really nicely to this conversation. But, you know, as you're um, thinking about your experience and working at TechSoup or with the food bank or with some of the organizations that you've helped in the community, um, you know, going through that process of digital transformation, adding tools to your environment, how do you think of, you know, advice you might have around, um, you know, that, that evolution and, and how you think about, you know, the sort of big picture, addressing the immediate needs at hand and also bringing technology into your environment that someone in the chat mentioned is always changing. And how do you kind of um, plan for that and think through that process of incorporating these tools so that they are actually helpful as opposed to just another, you know, another thing to manage? You know, I mean, uh, I think that, you know, the first thing is it, it's hard to be, it's kind of easy to get in the weeds with, with technology. Like you're just kind of always sort of like, just, you know, somebody's is here catching the balls people are throwing at you, right? But I think at the end of the day, what's important is that if you can get in front of the strategic vision of the organization and say like, where's this organization, where we as an organization wanna be in three years, five years, and then to be able to map out a technical roadmap in terms of what will you be needed to, if you're growing, you know, to sustain that growth, to be sustainable, and for me, like when we, you have, you have, you break, you can break it apart into these very, very high level sort of um, goals and say, okay, what does it mean to be sustainable and, and, or, or more cost effective? And then as you're going through, and well, that means maybe, you know, moving from data, you know, data, you know, your data closet or wherever you have your, your servers to the cloud. But if, if you do that, then you have to sort of plan ahead because Oftentimes what will happen is people will just start using a tool or an app in the cloud and not think through sort of necessarily things like how does that fit in with your, you know, privileged access or, you know, the roles in your organization and how do you map the roles to the individuals who should be, you know, using those systems. And so, you know, there's a lot of times very, you know, there's you know, lots of ways you can experiment with things online these days. And so... I mean, which is fun. And, and we at TechSoup encourage that. We encourage it internally and also we encourage it externally. But I think that when you come to, before you actually op, become some, something becomes operational, to think that through and say, okay, what does that mean now that we're actually going to using this you know, as a supported tool within our organization? Who should be the admins? Who should be the, the super users? Who should be the ones who you know, provide guidance and who are the ones who should configure it and, and also audit and, and govern it to make sure that the data is secure, that it's backed up. And even because just because you're in cloud, you, it doesn't mean you still can't, you, have, you still have to think about all that stuff. Um, in fact, some ways more because the tools oftentimes are not configured out of the box right away. And you really have to go in and, and tweak them in order to ensure that they're, they're, they're sustainable and that they, you know, that you're leveraging them appropriately for your organization. Yeah, that's great. There's certainly a lot to lot to think about and plan for. And, um, you know, I know certainly, uh, obviously, the, the, our, the team, the New Relic team and our team um, and any, you know, many other companies, you know, there's a lot of companies that are committed to supporting and engaging in the nonprofit space. And, you know, we certainly, um, in my experience, one, nonprofits are often really happy to kind of share their experience with one another. And it's a pretty collaborative space. And so I think that's a great way to you know, get additional education and experiences as what other experiences have been and, you know, kind of maybe avoid some common challenges. Um, mm -hmm. And then I know that we also, you know, have teams, a lot of the different companies have teams that will, you know, uh, help kind of evaluate, you know, what value might you see out of this over time, right? And so I think that whenever you feel uh, at, at your own organization, you know, in a place and time to engage with the different, you know, sort of solutions, obviously, that's a process in and of itself. Um, but there are there are resources to kind of help you think through some of those, um, you know, trade offs and, and the challenges that might come. So, um, and I know that, you know, Michael, this, uh, you've just got a wealth of experience. I know you do a lot of um, sort of sharing your experience and, and you've done that with us at PagerDuty and I, I believe with New Relic and others. So uh, we appreciate that and the ability to, to have this time with you. And like I said, we could go probably through this whole 
hour uh, just in conversation, but um, we'll pivot into making sure we have some time for talking about uh, New Relic and PagerDuty and its Q&A um, along the way. And just appreciate you sharing, you know, in this in this webinar and others, uh, the experience you've had and, and um, certainly valuable to hear your experiences. So thank you for that. Um, well, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Yes, thank you again. And I'm sure there'll be more uh, in the future here. So um, I will go ahead and, and uh, again, in the interest of time, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to uh, our friends at New Relic and Matt and team can speak to you a little bit more specifically about that platform and what it can do and how New Relic and PagerDuty uh, you know, integrate and then we'll do the same on our side. So uh, Matt, I'll turn it over to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jesse and Michael. I just love the points you were driving there. Great conversation. Um, like you say, Jesse, we could go on about it. Um, everybody here, feel free to, to reach out to Holly or to me if there are things where we might be able to help you too. That's that's one of the messages we want to uh, plan out there for you. Uh, you're not alone in this. I saw a question about um, you know the complication of roles. So there's all kinds of things flying in the chat. I think you know we're here as uh, not only on behalf of the product and our platform, but uh, on behalf of the community. So, you know, don't be bashful, feel free to, to reach out to us. Uh, with that, I, I wanna introduce Daniel Kim. Daniel's amazing. Uh, I don't wanna steal too much of his thunder. We're just so lucky to have him joining us today on behalf of the program. Uh, to, to segue over to what he's gonna present, I just wanna uh, let everybody know what New Relic is all about at, at a very basic level for those of you who may not know. We're here to help you provide visibility into your technology uh, and to help you move faster through that visibility and partner with PagerDuty uh, from a, a workflow and collab ops perspective. Uh, very well, great partnership there. Um, so to bring it down to earth a bit, uh, I think Daniel's gonna give us a demo, so uh, he'll build up to that. But uh, I'll pass the ball over to, to Daniel from our developer relations team, and uh, he can take it away from here. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, for sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar. Thanks for joining us. I know it may be early or late for some of you, depending on where, the, where you are in the world. Um, and I want to talk to everyone about like observability and kind of broadly what New Relic and other companies in this space do and how it can help your nonprofit. And I want to just start by saying that this stuff is really hard, especially if this is not your background and you haven't been doing this for lots of years. Uh, me personally, before I joined New Relic, I had no idea the complexity of things that lie behind operations teams and making sure that things stay up. So I want to make sure that to let you know that this stuff is hard. So if you get starting to get into the weeds and you find it very overwhelming, like same, like I, I found it very overwhelming as well. Um, so before I dive into like what observability is and what New Relic does, I want to kind of talk about what I do at New Relic real quick. So I'm a principal developer advocate at New Relic, which means that I go and talk to developers and other folks that may be using uh, New Relic or other platforms that to help them get better visibility into what they're running in the cloud or their environments. Um, I'm also a founder of a nonprofit uh, called Bit Project. We help um, kids, uh, high school and college kids uh, get real world hands-on experience with developer tooling and like uh, building their own projects. So I'm pretty familiar with like TechSoup and all of the ecosystem around nonprofit like tech tooling. Uh, so if you also have questions about that, please feel free to reach out to me. And I also love talking about observability. So today I'm gonna talk about like why you as a nonprofit person should care about ops and observability. So if you are running a nonprofit in today's age, you're probably relying on digital infrastructure to host parts or most of your operations, depending on what your nonprofit does. Whether it's managing volunteers, managing donations, a lot of things happen on the cloud or on websites or applications. So when they go down, you get very interesting messages uh, ranging from the vanilla, I can't access your site or this donation link doesn't work to more spicier comments like, this doesn't work, or this is so slow and unusable. Why would I ever use this, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so when this happens, New Relic is the platform that can help you get up and running. So find the issue faster so you can go fix it and get on with your day. And the thing with these modern websites is that as your nonprofit grows and your tech stack becomes more and more complicated, it kind of turns into a 
spider web, if you will, of different services that you kind of glue together. So if something goes wrong, it's really hard to figure out what part of my app on the cloud is failing so I can go fix that part of the app. So my constituents or my donors are able to get on with it there and use my services. And I wanna walk through the layers of complexity in a modern tech stack. So the first kind of most base layer of an outage could be related to an infrastructure issue. So that means that the underlying hardware, like the uh, virtual machines or the physical servers that you use might be down. So that could be an issue why your uh, app might be down. If you are in a more modern scaled environment where you're using some complex technology like Kubernetes to orchestrate and manage your workloads on the cloud, it might be an issue with Kubernetes, or it could be an application issue because a developer that's working on your application might have pushed some bad code, and then that piece of code is causing all sorts of problems in the environment. So even in this very simple kind of demonstration, you saw that there's different layers and different problems that could be the reason why your app isn't working. So New Relic helps you find out what is going wrong so you can go fix it. So that's what New Relic does. We're, you can think of us as a giant database that just sucks up data from every part of your tech stack, whether it is third-party SaaS services, the tech platforms you use, your websites themselves, your applications, your Kubernetes clusters, whatever it may be, we have hundreds of integrations with multiple different technologies so you can get full visibility into how your systems are performing. So for example, you can install uh, our integration with Kubernetes or Java or whatever technologies you use. So you can click in and get exact real-time data into how they are performing. So if something goes wrong, you can go fix it faster. So here's another, like the next slide is uh, going to be like a reflection of what would be a modern workflow leveraging New Relic and PagerDuty. So let's say, for example, you're hosting your uh, website on a physical server. And because of all of the amazing work that you do, the traffic increases to the point where it, it's about to hit the CPU usage limit of the server that you're. So New Relic can constantly monitor how your server is doing in terms of how much is being used. And if it crosses a certain threshold, it can alert you via PagerDuty to be like, hey, developer, or hey, IT person who's working at the nonprofit, this app is about to hit the CPU usage limit for your server. So you should get someone to look at it so you can either uh, like get another server or move it uh, or increase um, the allocated amount of CPU that it's allowed to use. You can leverage technologies like PagerDuty and New Relic to automate that process. So you don't have to wait to hear from a customer to be like, hey, your app isn't working for you to go fix the problem. You can proactively be warned by technologies like New Relic and PagerDuty to be like, hey, this is about to like hit the fan. You should go have someone investigate that so you know it doesn't affect the customers uh, in the future. So this is a, a very simple, very simplified view of what uh, could be possible with PagerDuty and New Relic. So that's all I have regarding like what New Relic is. So I wanna do a quick demo of our platform and how it might be useful to your nonprofit. Um, so uh, this is a uh, just dropped in uh, view of what my new Relic account looks like. And you can see there's a lot of um, entities uh, here, like a lot of things that I'm sending data from. Um, I'm pretty sure that you probably won't have 3000 different workloads sending you data, but uh, this is kind of a bird's eye view of how, how all of my applications in various parts of my environment are doing. And you can see right here, all of the red ones are the things that are not doing so hot. So if you're an IT person, you can go and click into various things that are uh, learning and uh, not doing very well and get more detailed information about what might be failing so you can go fix it faster. Um, so let's say you have a couple of errors in your website. Um, so that's very common. If you deploy things into the cloud, you'll know that nothing is ever perfect and everything breaks down eventually. Uh, if I click into a particular error, New Relic can help you contextualize a lot of the information that we gather from your environments. So here you can get very, very basic information, like the number of occurrences this particular error has caused. So you can see like how much of your potential customer base or your donor base could be affected by this particular issue. In addition, you can get uh, additional attributes that give you more context into where this uh, issue might be happening. For example, like where it's happening. For example, here you can see that it's happening in Google in the Google environment, as well as the exact part of your application that might be failing. 
In addition, you can get awesome things like stack traces and other uh, technical details to help you debug things faster. In addition, you can see here that there, we have integrations with things like Jira, as well as ability to assign this particular error to a person. So you're able to work collaboratively on issues that might be plaguing your system. So if we zoom into the particular service that it's airing out in, we can get a couple of really useful details. So here you can see very awesome like uh, golden metrics. So you can get things like response time or how long this particular part of your application is taking, uh, as well as things like throughput. So how many times that it's being called, as well as the number of errors that it's producing. Um, uh, another really cool thing about, uh, 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 about New Relic is that you're able to visually visu visualize how your error is impacting the rest of your large system. So let's say, for example, uh, I want to look at a particular uh, error and how it's affecting my system. I can see here that this part of my system that's airing out might be due to a root cause that might be further up the chain. So New Relic helps you visualize very complex systems in a pretty easy to see visual way. So you can figure out the root cause of a particular error faster. So you can figure out, hey, I should take a closer look at the checkout service because it's connected directly to a cart service that's airing up. In addition, we use a really cool tooling like machine learning to be able to uh, figure out, hey, like this part of my, uh, my application is 242% uh, slower than average. So maybe I should go take a closer look at this part of my application because it's not doing as well. So yeah, that is basically New Relic. It is a way for you to visualize your very complex environments in the cloud by sucking up all the data using our integrations and helping you figure out, hey, if something is going wrong, where should I look to go fix it so you can go get it up and running faster? So yeah, that's like my demo for today. Like, let me know if you have any questions about New Relic. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Great, thank you, Daniel. That was great, uh, and I know there's a lot there. It's tough to cover in uh, in this amount of time. So, if folks have questions, again, feel free to put them in the chat. I know that we've shared. Folks are sharing our contact information, so hopefully, this is just the start of conversations, and we're always happy to answer questions, um, whether we have time today or or as follow up. So. Um, as mentioned, similarly, we want to share just a little bit more detail about PagerDuty. Um, so let me share my screen real quick and make sure that you are able to see that. Um, okay. Um, all right. I got a thumbs up or a uh, just confirmation audio real quick that this is that oh, you're good. seeing that. We see you, Jesse. All right. Great. We see Thanks, you. Holly. Appreciate it. Got three screens and you never know for sure. Uh, <laughs> all right, so um, yeah, so as I mentioned, you know, we, we wanna share just a little bit more. I'm gonna keep the slides brief so that we can focus the majority of our time on the demo from Maggie uh, so you can get a, a sense of, of what it looks, actually looks and feels like and does. So, um, you know, very briefly, what's our mission at PagerDuty? Uh, what does the platform actually do? Uh, what are we focused on um, in terms of working with nonprofit and social impact organizations? And then we'll do the demo and, and hopefully have plenty of time for Q&A. Um, so our, our mission at PagerDuty is to revolutionize operations and build customer trust by anticipating the unexpected in an unpredictable world. Um, that is the company overarching mission um, and what we think is, um, you know, uh, sort of the role of um, incident response and digital, digital operations uh, within, you know, the way that organizations are, um, are carrying on with their mission and their business. So what does that mean? You know, this is a very um, uh, just sort of quick graphic of, of what is that kind of, what is the comparison, right? We've talked a lot through this time about digital transformation. And all of you have probably experienced this uh, very, um, you know, uh, directly in various ways, right? In the way you're uh, trying to, to kind of support the operations of the organization. We've gone from, you know, uh, customer agnostics or signal poor uh, manual work to very customer centric signal and data rich um, automated environments. Obviously everyone's on a phone uh, or has a digital device readily available. That means they can engage with organizations um, more actively and um, you know more uh, agile manner and that means that there are more systems more data 
more information for you and an organization and all of us um, to kind of process and, and manage to serve uh, your missions, right? And that means also, as Michael alluded to earlier and Daniel did as well, you know, things are going to happen. There are going to be challenges um, that, that, you know, in the, in the nature of digital environments, something is going to go wrong. And so having the ability to understand, um, you know, using platforms like New Relic, uh, to kind of capture that information. And then with uh, a platform like PagerDuty to sort of uh, digest that information and um, decipher the signals uh, to understand what that means, uh, where, you know, what teams uh, might need to be involved or what systems are, are being affected so that you can hopefully um, sort of minimize the time it takes to understand what's going on, uh, 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 rally the right resources and people to address whatever that, uh, that trouble or, or issue is, and then keep your systems up and running, ultimately, obviously, with the goal of serving your constituents and your beneficiaries and your communities uh, most effectively. Um, and so we know that you know, in, uh, in the nonprofit context, that can mean a matter of life or death, seconds can. Um, it can mean not getting food to somebody that's uh, you know, uh, experiencing hunger. Um, it can mean not being able to respond to uh, a crisis uh, or, or, or support somebody on a hotline. There's a lot of different um, sort of real world uh, applications that that means. And I think that that's always important for us is to keep it in the context of how does that actually impact people? Um, so this is just a, a handful of different organizations or more uh, that are using PagerDuty and you've heard some examples already. And uh, I'll tell you briefly just about a couple and then we'll move into the demo. Um, but I think the point being, we know that, you know, in a lot of ways, uh, nonprofit and social impact organizations are sort of the definition of real-time mission critical work. And our goal is to help you be able to do that uh, and keep that uh, those services up and running. Um, so one organization is uh, that's a, uh, an interesting example is NextLeaf Analytics. Um, the organization's on a mission to preserve human life and protect our planet by designing sensor technologies, generating data analytics and advocating for data-driven solutions to empower low to middle-income countries. Um, and PagerDuty partnered with NextLeaf Analytics for a pilot program to understand and solve power outage issues in Sub-Saharan Africa, where only 28% of hospitals have reliable power. And basically the way they're using PagerDuty is by um, being able to get more insight into, or visibility into um, uh, trends associated with power outages in these areas. And then they get, we're able to gain more insight into generator usage, clarified financial projections, uh, negotiate with uh, service providers and ultimately um, get more intelligent and help the hospitals to manage power outages so that they could serve their patients uh, more uh, effectively and in a more reliable way. And so that may not be sort of an ex expected way that you would think of or use PagerDuty, um, certainly in, in, in a technical use case in terms of monitoring these outages, but, you know, um, in a in a almost third party way to support the, the efforts of the hospitals and their ability to provide the healthcare um, that they, they aim to serve, that they aim to provide. Uh, one other example is the Trevor Project, uh, which uh, is an organization that uh, focuses on suicide prevention efforts among the LGBTQ plus community. And they are uh, effectively a crisis response platform that operates 24 seven, 365. And they want to make sure that that platform is up and running at all times. Uh, if they can, you know, in order to best serve their community, uh, they need to make sure they're available um, and they uh, need to ensure that the, their systems are up and running. Um, and so they have, they have leveraged page duty to do, to, do, uh, to do just that, to improve their ability, their time to respond and, and resolve its issues with their platform. Um, they're enable, enables they're an engineering team to have a dynamic on-call schedule so that they can um, you know, balance the workload and, and share the effort in addressing potential challenges that come up with the platform and respond as quickly as possible to address those. And one other just interesting um, sort of added use case with, with Trevor Project is they've got an online community where folks are um, you know, engaging with, with one another uh, in that online space. And, and Trevor Project has actually leveraged PagerDuty to uh, flag and create alerts for key terms. And so they've got a certain, you know, subset or a set of key terms that they've uh, identified. And if those terms are mentioned in the online community, uh, they can receive uh, or, or a notification alert can be sent to their client support team. Um, and that team can then reach out to a community member and, and offer support if they're in a time of particular need, if there are terms or, you know, around suicidal ideation, the ability to see that, uh, get an alert and respond to that quickly 
sort of a non-technical application of how you could actually use a tool like this to really directly impact um, lives and, and the community you're working with. So those are a couple examples. Um, and I want to turn it over to Maggie to actually give you a demo and a little more insight into how the product uh, can be used. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and I'll Perfect. turn it over to you, Maggie. Thank you, Jesse. So for the demo portion, I'm going to share a pre-recorded video that I made yesterday just to make sure we can get through everything in the allotted time. So you guys should be able to see my screen. I'm going to start playing it. So before we jump into the demo today, okay. I do want to give a quick high level overview of what PagerDuty is and how it works. So the first part of my screen, you see this invent intelligence box. So what PagerDuty is doing is we're ingesting an enormous amount of data from your system. So think of all of the things that your constituents, your donors, your beneficiaries, as well as your staff interact with. For example, uh, these digital signals could be coming from your monitoring tools, so New Relic, Datadog, SolarWinds, and these uh, monitoring tools are going to be alerting you on the health of your systems. These alerts on their own can oftentimes be confusing and hard to understand for anyone. So with PagerDuty, we're really going to make sense of this information and alert you on the things that are important and actionable. So from there, PagerDuty is going to orchestrate the right response every time by automating the way that you engage and coordinate responses across the organization, as well as how you keep stakeholders informed, removing the manual processes that oftentimes delay the resolution. From there, PagerDuty can even go as far as automating the diagnostic and remediation steps needed in order to fix the issue with or without human intervention. We'll see how that works in the demo. Um, and now that we've gone through this quick high-level overview, we're going to jump into that demo right now. Technology-enabled services need to be operational 24-7. And nowhere does this ring more true than for mission-driven organizations where service reliability can make or break access to things like suicide and safety hotlines, disaster relief, time critical healthcare, and many more. For the clients and communities that these organizations serve, seconds can be life altering. Let's take a look at how PagerDuty could help an organization whose mission is to deliver time critical healthcare to underserved communities. I work on the IT support team at this organization and I'm out walking my two dogs on my lunch break, almost back to my house when my phone starts ringing. It's PagerDuty calling me and letting me know that an incident has been triggered on our crisis communication service. Not only did PagerDuty call me, I also received an email, a text message, as well as a push notification. I open up this push notification coming in from the mobile app and I see details regarding the incident. I can see that it's coming from our monitoring tool, New Relic, and looking at this, I see that it's affecting our crisis communication service. I'm going to update it to a priority one because if something goes wrong on this service, we're not going to be able to communicate with our frontline responders. Luckily, with PagerDuty, I'm able to do my work on the go in moments when seconds matter the most. Now that I'm back home after my walk, I go ahead and log into PagerDuty from my laptop. Right now, I'm looking at the service graph to see what the impact of this incident truly is. So our incident is occurring on our crisis communication network server. This service graph is helping me understand that if I don't address this immediately, we are going to have some issues not only on our emergency response communication service, but also our donation center, our website, and all of the other technical services that this relates to. So being able to look at this, I understand the direct impact, and I know that I need to address this issue immediately before our emergency response communication service goes down. So going back into the incident, I take a look at the notes section. So this was automatically attached to the incident when it was triggered through New Relic. 
these are going to give me some troubleshooting steps that I could try to go through as I begin trying to figure out what is causing this issue and what I need to do to resolve it. After reading through the notes, I realize I need to get more people involved because I don't know exactly what I need to do in order to fix this. I don't have the time to sift through spreadsheets to figure out who's on call and who can help me. I also need to update all of our frontline workers of the issue at hand. Luckily, with PagerDuty, I'm able to initiate a response play. I'm going to run this P1 major incident impacting our crisis communication line. When I run this play, it's going to go out and figure out who's on call across the various different teams. So we have our crisis communication engineers, our crisis communication team, as well as our infrastructure team. So I didn't have to go through and try and figure out who exactly we needed to pull in. PagerDuty automatically did that for me. Can see that a conference bridge was automatically added as well. So when the team gets together to try and work and solve this issue, they can simply click the link and jump into the conference bridge. I can also set a Slack or Teams channel, which will invite all of our responders into that line of communication completely removing the manual steps I would typically have to take if we didn't have a tool like PagerDuty. Running that response play also automatically posted a status update. So I want those frontline healthcare workers to be aware that we're experiencing some issues on this particular service. So they should have received a text message or an email letting them know that, hey, we're experiencing some issues. They're also going to have access to the status dashboard where they can get a holistic overview into all of the services that they're subscribed to and the health of these different systems. So now your team can focus on resolving the issue rather than having to email and communicate with stakeholders. After speaking to the broader team, we determined we need to run some diagnostic scripts on this particular service to pinpoint exactly what is going on. I'm going to run this automation action of checking the disk space. Being able to run this automation job quickly, I'm able to see the output report here and figure out what the root cause is. Based on this information, I know that I need to restart the service. I'm able to run this remediation action and restart the service without ever having to leave PagerDuty. Without automation, this process would have gone through several different escalations, several different teams, and several different tools. We can see that this resolved the issue. All of our services are operational and healthy. We were able to proactively identify the issue and resolve it before it impacted any of our end users. Thanks to PagerDuty, we were able to execute on our mission of delivering time-critical healthcare to communities. When seconds can be a matter of life or death, when downtime means a delay in reaching people, when you need to be ready for anything, that's when PagerDuty gives you powerful response and automation capabilities. That way you can deliver more reliable services, build more resilient systems, and have more time to focus on your mission. Thank you all for watching this demo. Great, thank you, Maggie, for for doing that, um, and hopefully that provides you know a good, uh, an example of through various you know use cases for both PagerDuty and obviously New Relic. I know that uh, there's a lot of complexity, and I'll speak for myself that there is uh, there's elements of that that are way beyond uh, my my expertise. But I think that a lot of folks we know on this call are. Um, you know, have some level of experience, and certainly we're available to talk through any of these things in more detail um, in follow-up conversations. Um, I think also just very quickly wanted to highlight, uh, I don't know that we did, but both New Relic and PagerDuty, as well as a number of our sort of peers in the space, you know, have a, a strong commitment to the nonprofit social impact space. And that includes not only folks that, you know, have experience in both um, uh, areas in terms of the tech, as well as with nonprofits, but then we also have special you know pricing programs and product uh, sort of offerings um, and so those are certainly things that we can we can you know answer questions on and follow up uh, to this uh, you know and so we'd love to hear from folks I'm aware that we're 
getting close on time here. And so wanted to see if there are any immediate questions that folks would like to ask. I know there's been a lot of um, um, uh, back and forth in the chat, but if there are if there are any questions that folks would like to try and have answered, uh, certainly feel free to, to drop those into the chat. Um, and then we also have uh, a kind of a final poll uh, uh, question uh, that we'll throw out there. So it looks like Kirk said, more info on infrastructure monitoring. Um, Maybe Dan, I'll let you. Oh, did we? Oh no, you're still there. Sorry, Dan, I didn't see you. Um, Dan or Matt, you, if you want to chime in briefly on that, and then obviously we have more follow-up information that we can certainly share. Yeah. So regarding infrastructure monitoring, uh, New Relic, as well as a lot of our partners, have uh, the ability for you to be able to hook into your infrastructure, whether it's bare metal, like if you're running your own Linux servers, we can hook into that, or if you're using a cloud platform like AWS or Azure. We have integrations where you can pull infrastructure level data directly into our platform. So like, I think it depends on like what your setup is, but more than more likely than not, we will probably have some way of for you to monitor that infrastructure. Reach out to us, Kurt, we'd love to help you. Yeah, and similarly at PagerDuty, I think, you know, there's a, uh, over 650 integrations with different platforms. So, you know, figuring out sort of that mapping, I think is really critical and having some expert folks like Dan or or Maggie or even Matt, who has has lived it on the nonprofit side, you know, being able to you know have our teams work with you to kind of map through that process is certainly something that we can do. Um, I see uh, Daniel. I know you and I had a little back and forth, and you asked about DIA uh, issues um, uh, and and or or initiatives. Sorry, um, and and how we might use these platforms. I think it's a really interesting question, um, and I think that you know being able to um, to dig into that a little bit more, just to make sure you know that we're we're actually in in um, uh, uh, you know in alignment on what you're asking. But I think sort of what it seems like you're saying is you know this idea the the ability to identify certain issues you know within a service or even in in the field and being able to send alerts to to help folks that need to get involved. Right. And I'll give you one other really quick example of an organization that is using PagerDuty actually in a non technical manner. Um, entirely they have uh they have folks that are basically responding to violence uh in their community um and they have sort of field um um i'm blanking right now on their kind of specific role title but they're really out in the field responding and trying to engage in um um incidents where there are violence and maybe um you know intervene and or respond to you know the aftermath of violence whether that be with families in the hospital and they use Pager Duty simply to send alerts to those teams when something happens, right? It's not about their digital service. It's about something that's happened out in the community. So, um, you know, that may be a little bit akin to what you're talking about, um, but um, certainly could have follow-up conversations. And I think there are a lot of really interesting, you know, both really core technical use cases, but also these non-technical um, sort of alert and incident management. Obviously, that, that covers a wide range. Um, so, yeah, I would love to, to, uh, to chat more about that. Um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think, is any, any, anything else, um, you know, maybe we could go ahead and launch the final poll question, um, Captain Aretha, uh, just to get a sense if folks feel like this has been valuable, um, you know, hopefully it has been valuable time. It's great to see that I know folks have time commitments and some folks have had to drop off, but great to see the engagement in the chat and to see that folks have stayed on. And obviously we will share out uh, follow-up information um, and recording and, and would love to have ongoing conversations, I think on both sides, uh, certainly an open, open door to reach out to any of us. And I think you have a lot of our contact information here. Um, yeah, we, you know, one thing to note, we are doing this as a part of a series and, and we're really thankful to work with the TechSoup team and, and our teams. And we're gonna bring in some others um, to talk about what is this sort of the journey of modern ops and digital transformation. So we're doing one November 9th, I believe is the date uh, where it'll be all, all of us, as well as our friends at Slack um, to talk about collab ops um, in this, uh, in the, in the um, spirit of, of digital operations and, and digital transformation. And then we will likely be doing another one in December. Um, and so if you have, you know, topics or questions that you'd like to hear about in that context, please let us know in the TechSoup email. And we would love to make sure that, you know, we're, we're making this as, as um, relevant and valuable for you, uh, knowing that there's plenty of things you have on your plate and got to choose how to spend your time. So um, I, uh, I see uh, some chat that's going on and, and see some responses around, you know, what, what, 
how um, I think that, oh yeah, how, how you feel about your organization's digital transformation jersey journey. Uh, still confused, nothing wrong with that. And um, again, there's a lot of resources, uh, folks on this call, as well as other things TechSoup provides and our organizations provide. And our goal is to be helpful and to support the community. Um, all of us have made a point to be working in the nonprofit space and with nonprofit organizations. Um, and so we would love to help however we can. Um, certainly, you know, providing more clarity on the tools themselves. Um, and it's great to hear that some folks feel like there's some, uh, at least a better understanding of digital transformation, certainly a long journey and a complex topic. So we don't expect that uh, we're gonna answer all the questions in this short amount of time, um, but would love to continue the conversations. Um, so I think we're, we're, we're basically about to wrap right on time here. I'm gonna go quickly check back to my uh, notes on anything that I didn't cover. And then Aretha, uh, the team, if there's anything else you wanna add, feel free to chime in here. But I think, um, I think that we're, I think we've, we've covered everything. And again, we just really appreciate your time. We hope this has been helpful and we look forward to additional conversations here in the future. Yeah, just thank everybody for being here and we'll see you on the next webinar. Take care, everybody. Thank you Thanks, all. everyone. Take care. Have a great day.